Okay, guys, so we were having some struggles on this report on getting the calculations correct. Uh, the actual conclusions were actually turned out pretty nicely. How we were actually explaining and talking about everything was okay. Uh, but the calculations of like how to get these numbers, um, especially number five, uh, was, was pretty rough. So let's go ahead and we'll walk through this. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to extract what I actually know. So I know that the number of surgeons... Uh, is equal to 10. That was the first one. Um, we know that hip replacements per year equals 300. Um, we know that the proportion that fail is equal to 5%. And we know that the proportion, sorry, the proportion fail that successfully sue is equal to 10%. Okay, and then we can go through and see that the payout is going to be equal to $450,000. And we know that the years of coverage is equal to 30. And uh, we're going to put in this as like this percentile just per going to be equal to the 99th. We'll get to that percentile in later. So the first four questions we're actually pretty good with. So how many hip replacements are going to happen over the 30 year period? So we know that the years is equal to, maybe I'll, we'll just say these are the number of hip replacements is going to be equal to the number of years that we're dealing with multiplied by uh, the number of hip replacements per year and we get this 9,000 right there and that's the first answer. All right, next question, how many hip failures or how many hip failures are going to occur over the 30 year period? Okay, so we'll do this as the number of failures and that's going to equal the number of hip replacements multiplied by the proportion of failures. And when we hit enter on that guy, our number of failures is this 450 or this number of hip replacements. Remember that is 300 and, oh sorry, not the number of hip replacements. The number of hip replacements is this 9,000 multiplied by the probability of failure, 5%, which gives us 450. And that's our next answer right there. Next question, how many individuals are expected to successfully sue? Okay, right, there's a couple of ways that, that we can do this. Um, so I'll start off with calling this number of suing. The easiest way that I think is we take the number of failures and then we multiply it by the proportion of those failures that successfully sue. And when we get that, the number that sue is equal to 45. Now, the other way that we could do this is we could take of the 5%, 10% fail, or, or so the 5% five, five who sue of those 10% uh, successfully, 5% uh, fail, 10% successfully sued. So that gives us a half percent of the total number of hip replacements. So I could then do the 9,000 multiplied by 0, 0, 5, and that gives me 45. Now, most people were able to get to that point, okay. Now, how much is the company expected to pay out? Uh, well, let's do the number, or we'll, we'll do expected pay, which is going to be equal to the pay multiplied by the number of them who successfully sue. And we get this 20, uh, $20,250,000. Most people, were, we were able to get to that point, okay. All right, so now we get to this number five. If the worst case scenario happens, what proportion of hip replacement failures um, successfully sued for malpractice over the 30 year period? Okay, so now we have to know that we have this 10%, and it's that 10% that, that we're saying that, okay, if the worst case happens, we know the, we know what the true proportion is, it's 10%, but it can change from year to year. 
on an individual year. So let's go and what we need to do, the equations that we need come from um, our can, uh, central limit theorem, continuous distributions and central limit theorem. And we need to go down to proportions because that that's what we're dealing with. This 10% or this 10 with the, the proportion is 10%. So if we go down here to our continuous time and variables, so central limit theorem of proportions. So this is one of those videos that we watched. And I'm going to hit play. And I'm going to make that silent. And I'm going to jump forward a couple of times to get to the equation that I want us to see. Just a second, just a little further, and there we are. Okay, so we have this z equation that that we that we're probably going to be using pieces of, and this standard deviation with respect to the proportion, or this is sigma sub p. Okay, so the true proportion, or p, is equal to this number of failures, and we need to figure out this um, this sigma p. So if we do, we'll do, let me type over here, sigma underscore p is going to be equal to the square root of pi. Okay, so pi in this case, we see this pi over here, we have this pi times pi complement. Well, our pi is going to be, be this p fails of uh, um, of the failures that successfully sue. So we're going to have this. I'm going to do it just with the numbers because it's going to be a little bit easier. Multiply by 1 minus 0.1, right? That's a complement. And divided by 450, or this number of failures, right? Because it's the proportion of the failures. We know that in this scenario that that is going to be a fixed value, this 450. Um, but the proportion of those 450 who successfully sue is going to fluctuate. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and hit enter on that, and we get this sigma p of this dinky little 0.047 whatever. Okay, we need that for when we actually go in, into our commander. So let's go ahead and open up our commander. Uh, it doesn't look like I've opened up right now, so let's do... It is. Teach that. So when we are given a percentile, right? We're given this percentile or this worst case scenario. We need to figure out like how many. Um, oh, what's the exact question? The exact question is: If the worst case scenario happens, what proportion of hip replacement failures successfully sued for malpractice over the thirty years? Okay, so we need to figure out this worst case scenario. Now, I had a lot of people do like just like try to take that 99% and multiply it by something. Remember here, we're dealing with a normal distribution because we can use the central limit theorem. Let's do a check to see if we can actually use uh, the central limit theorem here. So if we can use the central limit theorem, remember that our n times p and n times one minus, or hold on, not p, pi, the true proportion, and n times one minus pi, those both have to be at least 15. All right, it's gonna give me an error, yeah, whatever. All right, so let's check this out. So our number, the number of failures, we'll do the number of failures, and multiply that by 0.1 for the uh, probability or the proportion of failures who successfully sue is equal to 45. And if we take the complement of that, one minus that, just to check to see if we can even do this, is 405. So we're okay here. Both of the successes and the failures kind of equal at least 15. All right, so now that we've done that, what we can now do 
is we can actually use our central limit theorem. We know what sigma p equals. We got this guy. So we've got all the pieces that we need to, for our commander. Let's go ahead and do that. So we want to go to our basic statistics. We can go to our random variables. We're doing a continuous, normal, and we want to do quantiles because we've been given a probability. And so our probability is the 99th percentile, which is in reference to the lower tail. So the mean is going to be the proportion, our true proportion, this 0.01, or no, not 0.01, sorry, 0.1. And the standard deviation is going to be this sigma p. Let me type that in again down here. Sigma underscore p, and that is equal to, give me a second, that guy. And let's go ahead and paste it in for our standard deviation. Okay, so we've been given this probability, we've been given this mean, and we've been given the standard deviation. I'm going to go ahead and click OK on this one. And I have this like 11%. I've actually made a mistake. We need to go back up to our sigma p. So if we go all the way up, to our sigma p, I made a mistake. I had this should be a minus sign right there, and now we've got this sigma p of point zero one four one four. Okay, now that we've got that, we should be able to be okay. Uh, let's go ahead and just copy it real quick. It's always good to go back over your equations. And let's get that pasted in. There we go. Oops, didn't get a copy. Copy, paste, and there we go. All right, so now that we have the standard deviation, previously we had it miscalculated because we had a multiplication instead of a minus there. Remember, we have to take the complement. And now if we go ahead and click OK, now we get this 13% or 0.1329. And if we look up here, we've got yep, 0.1329. And that's the worst case scenario. Now let me show you how this is true. Let's go up. You didn't have to do this, um, but sometimes this can really help if we plot some stuff out. So we know what the mean is. The mean was 0.1. We knew what the standard deviation was. We just had it. We're going to plot the density, and we're just going to plot this, and we're going to see if this actually uh, looks like 90% uh, of the area under the curve shaded. And we'll do this 0 0.1, 3, 2, uh, 8, 8, 9, 5. That's what we calculated that to be. Let's make the color at least somewhat interesting, and let's graph it. And when we graph it, this is what we have. Our mean, so here's our distribution. Here is our cutoff point. And we're saying that this is the 99th percentile, or that this is 99% of the data is shaded under the curve, and we've got 1% uh, right there. And that is exactly uh, what we are, are looking for, that this is, yeah, this is kind of where we see uh, that this would be the worst case. And now, is it possible for it to be even worse? Well, it's like, yeah, technically, is it possible that every single person um, sues them? And the answer is yes, but it's extraordinarily unlikely. And I mean, this is what insurance companies do. All right, so we'll close out of this, and we've got this 13%. So if the worst case scenario uh, case happens, how many people successfully sue for malpractice? All right, so now we're going to take this 450 and we're going to multiply it by this 13 number that we got um, from, well, where was it? Well, okay, we'll just, we'll take this 13 because, oh, there it is, 0.13298. We will copy that, 
We will paste it. Give me a second. We'll paste it there. And we'll see that we have like 59. Now we want to round this up to be safe and say that, you know, 60 people sued. And so we got that there. And there were a couple of you who thought that instead of doing this with a normal distribution, that, that we should do this with a binomial. And the answer is, is that yes, we can absolutely do this in a binomial situation. So let's go take a look at how we would do that. And we're going to get the same answer. So if you go to the basic statistics and you go to the discrete and we go to the binomial distribution, we can also do binomial quantiles. And so the probabilities here is once again 0.99. The number of trials, there are 450 people because those are the people that were interested in, in them failing. We've decided that that's going to be constant. Um, and we're trying to figure out the probability of success, which is 0.1. And if we go ahead and click OK, look at that. What number did it give us? 60. So yeah, you could have done this with a binomial distribution, or you could have used the central limit theorem. Okay, so how much must Prime American Insurance Network be prepared to pay out over the 30 years? So if they're worried about that, um, this worst case scenario, it would be 60 people multiplied by that $450,000. So they have to be prepared to pay $27,000, or not $27 million. And to fully cover the worst case scenario, how much should prime insurance network uh, charge per surgeon per year over the 30 year period? So this would just be to cover cost. And all you need to do is to take this, let's see if I can't get it. So that would be our 27 million divided by 30 years divided by the 10 surgeons, and we're left with about $90,000 per year. And now suppose that over the 30 year periods, it only paid out the expected amount. How much would the profit would the American Prime American Insurance Network make? It would be like almost $7 million over those uh, 30 years, uh, because that would be the Oh, the amount that they need to be prepared to cover minus the amount that they're expected to cover. And so it looks like they're gonna make about $6 million. And the bonus was that the acronym for their Prime American Insurance Network is PAIN. And that's, uh, that's about it. So anyhow, I hope that that maybe helps just give a little bit more clarity of what you were supposed to do on this one. Once again, most of the points were on the interpretation. Um, like you could make a pretty poor attempt and still do pretty well on this assignment if your calculations were, were off. If basically everything looked good besides you not using the central limit theorem, uh, you know, it took off like, uh, I think 10%, um, or it took off like 15% for that. Uh, and if you tried to use a central limit theorem but didn't do it right, I think I just took off a couple of points. Um, but that's, yeah, how you were supposed to do this assignment. Uh, if you got any questions, don't hesitate to email me. I'll talk to you later, guys.